We don't get time off because the government shut down. We work for a podcast network and send a used car lot in Queens. Ass. The following podcast contains... Oh, ah! What the f*** did you do that for? Hey! That was... Don't swear. What are we? We're, 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 we're not swear. Explicit language. Hello and welcome to the podcast that asks a simple question. When neither one of you could just say that how you wanted to fuck each other? What the hell were you thinking? I'm your host, Dave Bledsoe, and this is a Saturday, January 20th, 2018, The Cure is Worse Than the Aziz edition of the show, where we talk about the hashtag Me Too movement and say, me and you too, stay tuned. The What the Hell Were You Thinking podcast is brought to you by Confirmafuck, Clarify and Consent. Do you suffer from a chronic inability to speak clearly and concisely about your intentions and desires during a potential sexual encounter? Then confirm a fuck is for you. A state-of-the-art binary solution for explaining whether or not you're into it. When things get sexual, simply reach for your confirm a fuck app, make your decision, and show every party involved. Green means go, red means stop. Change your status at any time by voice activated interface. Never worry about the confusion the sexually caused liaisons cause with confirm a fuck. Sign up now and get Kink Guard, our companion app, for free. Kink Guard is a quick quiz-based app letting everyone know which hole they can go. Confirm a fucking Kink Guard, because saying it to someone is so 20th century. It's what it is. They, they use it, the TV to program us from a young age. You ever watch like a cartoon that you used to watch when you were little as an adult? That shit is, is wild shit. <laughs> Some wild shit. I mean, like I was with my nephew. We sitting there, we watching Peppy the Pew, and I say to my neighbor, I say, now pay attention to this guy, because he's funny. I used to watch him when I was little. And then we watching Peppy the Pew, and I'm old now, I'm looking like, good God, what kind of fucking rapist is this guy? Like, take it easy, Peppy. <laughs> my nephew was sitting there cracking up. <laughs> See, sometimes you gotta take the pussy like Peppy, like, whoa, whoa. I gotta tell you, pod friends, it's times like this when I really wish my man card hadn't been revoked permanently by the International Society of Men. It was after an incident in 93 where I was found urinating while seated on a toilet during the annual bro ball. But in my defense, I just finished slamming an entire bottle of Jack Daniels while slurring sexual windows at a cardboard cutout of Margaret Thatcher. Do I make you horny, baby? Do I? Do I make you randy? Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. It's just a thing we did back then. But since I'm perma-banned from the manosphere, I can only guess how tough things must be on the front lines. As women around the country embrace the hashtag Me Too and the hashtag Time's Up movement, men around the country and indeed the world are saying hashtag... What do I do? I hear you guys. I mean... We're amiable, well-meaning doofuses who happen to be the majority recipients of a patriarchy and a white supremacy. But we didn't ask for it. We just sort of got all of that stuff without really doing anything to get it. It's like finding a $20 bill on the sidewalk. I mean, you look around to see if anyone's there, but there aren't. So, you know, you just kind of keep it. A lot of fellas are feeling as though we are unasked for a windfall and the life lottery is making us the target for all the women out there who, frankly, (laughs) from their part, have just had enough of our shit. Not just our significant others, but I mean women collectively. It's like the entire human race of women walked into a room where the entire human race of men are sitting with our hands in our pants, reflexively scratching our balls and staring blankly at some form of sport on a television screen and then said, That's it. That is it. And now we're all outside cleaning the gutters like we'd promised last year. Except, you know, the women are actually ending centuries of carte blanche male domination of society, politics, economics, and sexual dynamics. Just this week, Aziz Ansari, a comedian and actor whose entire shtick is being a reasonably woke dude, had his turn in what the barely sentient skin tag Roger Stone lovingly calls the barrel. Online magazine Babe.net Yeah, I'd never heard of it either. But they published a story on January 13th about a 23-year-old woman going by the pseudonym of Grace who met and subsequently spent an evening with Ansari. Ansari is 34 and Grace is 23. And this evening didn't end well. While she stopped short of overtly accusing Ansari of sexual assault, her descriptions of the events that night made him out to be, uh... He's a pervert and a creep, and I hate him. The story lays out the evening in salty details explaining how the events were consensual, but the woman felt pressured to consent. 
And as the evening ends with the pseudonymous young Grace crying in an Uber on the way home, she most definitely felt violated. Ansari responded to the story with the following statement, quote, In September of last year, I met a woman at a party. We exchanged numbers. We texted back and forth and eventually went on a date. We went out to dinner and afterwards we ended up engaged in a sexual activity, which by all indications was completely consensual. The next day, I got a text from her saying that although it may have seemed okay, upon further reflection, she felt uncomfortable. It was true that everything did seem okay to me, so when I heard that it was not the case for her, I was surprised and concerned. I took her words to heart and responded privately after taking the time to process what she had said. I continue to support the movement that is happening in our culture. It is necessary and long overdue, unquote. After reading the story, it was hard to come away feeling as though Ansari were on the side of the angels. If the details are accurate, he pushed harder than the woman felt comfortable with and put her in a position where she didn't feel like she could not consent. It was a shitty thing to do. I'm not saying it wasn't. Yet, even in the most uncharitable light, did not go anywhere close to the Weinstein level of shittiness. And these two things can exist in the universe and not cancel each other out. Aziz and Sari can act shitty and push too far without being tossed out an airlock. But a lot of people sure think this is the case. Because this story has elicited, elicited the backlash, or maybe the anti-backlash, or the backlash preemption. I have no fucking idea what the fuck is going on or why, but it's clear enough that some people be mad. Caitlin Flanagan said in the Atlantic, quote, and what she said and the writer who told her story created was 3,000 words of revenge porn. The clinical details in which the story is told is intended not to validate her account as much as it is to hurt and humiliate Ansari. Lucia Brawley wrote on CNN.com, quote, very often we have much more power than we realize. To call Grace a victim is to trivialize victims and to diminish Grace, unquote. Barry Weiss wrote in the New York Times that the only crime Ansari is guilty of is not being a mind reader, quote. That is what I learned from the expose of Aziz Ansari published last weekend by the feminist website Babe. Arguably the worst thing that has happened to the hashtag Me Too, move, Me Too movement since it began in October. It transforms what ought to be a moment for women's empowerment into an emblem of female helplessness. There is a useful term for what this woman experienced on her night with Mr. Ansari. It's called a bad, it's called bad sex. It sucks. Unquote. Go back to her, tell her what's in your heart and how you really feel. I mean, I've not seen people this mad since the cat person article right before Christmas. A cat is an angel that poops in a box. Gavin, did, did you read the same article I read? Never mind. For those of you like Gavin who missed the proper cat person, it's a lovely story, a short story by Christian Rupiani in, in The New Yorker, where between a 20-something woman meets a 30-something man, they strike up a lengthy text relationship, which culminates in a stunningly bad night of sex and subsequent displays of mutual immaturity. The story, a piece of fiction, which really seems to elude a lot of readers, struck a nerve on the internet and predictably broke heavy along gender lines. A lot of women read the story and said, No, I, 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 I was dating him for a little while because... A lot of dudes read the story and said, He is nothing like me. And every single one of our exes read the story and said, And he sounded exactly like you? I personally loved Cat Person, because when I read the story... I had to stop and think for a good long while whether I'd ever dated a Kate Rupinian or anyone she possibly knew because that story was universal. Man or woman, gay or straight, that story was about the relationship we create in our minds before the real relationship begins and the crash that comes when you find out that both of you kind of fucking can't stand each other. Well, it, it happens all the time. But for some reason, however, people read the story as a sort of indictment against whichever side you personally disagreed with. And there were a lot of responses written, and a lot of them are wrong, and only one of them, I think, actually got it right. And that was written anonymously on BBC.com from the man's perspective. This is the closing line of the, of the story as written on BBC.com. Quote, should he masturbate or text her back? He did both. It felt good. He was better than her. She was nothing but an manipulative little girl screwing everything in sight. He writhed on his bed sheet, which he hadn't changed since she'd come over. He could still smell her perfume on him and managed to type out one last message. He knew it was nasty even as he wrote it, but the satisfaction felt too good to resist. Quote, whore, unquote. Why do I think that's so good? Because it's true. It's human. And it connects directly to the story that I read. He's fucked up. 
just like the female protagonist in the original Cat Person, perhaps like Aziz Ansari and Grace, because humans, particularly and especially American humans, are fucked up when it comes to sex. We make hideously bad choices when it comes to sex. The existence of so many children proves my point alone. And I know what you're thinking. You say, Jesus, he's not going to attack children, is he? Yes, he is. No, I'm not, because I promised I was going to be a nicer person and not be so mean. But what I will do is attack having children. Don't, don't do it, people, honestly. It just, it's just a bad idea. It never works out for anyone. I mean, that's what my mom told me while I was growing up. But back to my point about the story at hand, we're screwed up when it comes to all things sex-related. We have sex with the wrong people. We have sex with the right people at the wrong time. We confuse sex with love and love with sex. We get caught fucking in the men's room of shitty dive bars by bouncers and have to leave with a hard on and your pants barely up. Whoa, dude, what, TMI. When it comes to talking about sex, we are a giant bag of fail, twisted clothes with a ribbon of neurosis. We can't even talk about sex. Not really. Not openly. We can't lay out where we are and what we want from a partner until you're right up on the edge of breaking up with said partner due to your sexual incompatibilities. And we also fucking keep confusing sex with power and dominance. These are two different things. Some people use sex to maintain power and dominance, but sex is the tool, not the machine the tool built. Harvey Weinstein used sex to force women to submit to him utterly, to debase and demean their very existence. He used sex to force their submission to his massive need to own people. That fat fuck would have loved the plantation back in the day, right up until the time he was hung by the freed slaves when the Union Army passed through. So we need to be clear on our terms right now. And I don't know what was going on that night in Tribeca when Ansari took Grace home. Maybe he misread her. Maybe he, she didn't communicate clearly her position. Maybe he used his fame to pressure her into sex. Maybe she was torn on whether or not she wanted to fuck him. Maybe he's a shitty man who wanted to fuck her. Or maybe she was a shitty woman who wanted to fuck a famous guy. The only two people who know exactly what was going on, on, on in their heads are the two naked people in that room that night. And they ain't talking to each other now. And they sure as fuck weren't talking to each other that night. And I'm going to be honest here for a second. And it's going to sound like I'm making excuses for dudes. And maybe I even am. But we don't know how the fuck to even ask if you want to have sex with us. Not at first, anyway. Have you ever heard a guy trying to figure out how to say, Please do me the favor of having sex with me. It never comes out that good. It always comes out going, Oh, uh, so I was thinking, uh, maybe if we wanted, we could, only if you were into it, maybe could go back to my place or, or yours. Yours is fine. If you know that's the thing that you think is something that you could maybe see uh, doing with me, but only if you're only if you're into it. And that's a nice guy trying his best. And the world is full of douchebags saying, hey, baby, let's go fuck. But most guys, your average guys, your decent enough guys, maybe not a guy wearing a hashtag times up in, but just a lady or just a guy a lady might deign to throw a fuck. He's going to cross, look, come across looking like an asshole trying to figure out how to talk with you about sex because we get no training on this. Maybe things are better now, but my parents barely explain the mechanics of sex. Forget about the protocols and etiquette of the actual sexy time itself. Pop culture, that's what I get to look forward to. Every guy my age learned all we know from the art of seduction from hand fucking solo. You dress like a schlub, drive a piece of shit, and act really cocky. You like me because I'm a scoundrel. There aren't enough scoundrels in your life. I happen to like nice men. God, Gen X women suffered. They suffered in ways millennial women will never understand. Because Gen X male role models were schlubby dimmy dicks. Sam Malone from Cheers, Hawkeye from MASH. Hell, Fox Mulder was a paranoid porn addict. These are not the people you want teaching young men how to interact with young women when it comes to getting a freak on. And I don't know how things are for the youngs today, because from what I saw from back in the early 2000s, the pickings were grim and none. For God's sakes, they had to watch Katie Holmes dither between James Vanderbeek and Joshua Jackson. That's not even a choice at all. Pacey is a dreamboat. Buffy, don't get me started on how fucked up Buffy Summers was, falling for guys centuries older than she was, who often also happened to be demonic murderers, Willow casting spells on Tara to keep her in love with her. These are not role models for stable relationships. Or... You know, whatever people were watching back in the late 90s and early 2000s. I, I was in my early 30s, way too old for that. I was like leading the literature canon and watching and composing sonatas. I definitely wasn't watching Dawson's Creek Wednesdays at 8, 7 central on the WB network. Hashtag Team Pacey.
At a certain point in your adult life, you should probably start treating sex with a certain degree of pragmatism. I mean, after you've had a certain amount, there really isn't a mystery about around it anymore, so maybe stop acting like you're 12 and just realize what sex is. How the fuck are we ever gonna come to grips with issues like consent, harassment, and assault with the dyna- or the dynamics of the patriarchy if we can't even have an adult conversation about sex in the first place? It needs to be an ongoing, evolving conversation throughout, the lo- throughout our lives and relationships. And if we talk about it when we are kids, if we talk about it to our kids, discuss the idea of owning our own persons, of individual agency and identity, rather than making it a taboo topic, we could probably cut all this patriarchal shit down by 90% in just a generation. But you know, we don't have time for rational solutions. I mean, I love a dick joke as much as the next low rated podcaster, but I would give up all my best dick jokes to save one woman from being hurt. You are so brave. And maybe we could take the same pragmatic path with our current Me Too movement. If you're a man and you did some questionable shit, you should expect to be called out on your questionable shit. You aren't being tarred and feathered and run out of town on a log. All you gotta do is own up to your fuck up because you know what you did. I hear the term witch hunt being thrown around, but I'm not seeing a lot of innocent people being burned at the stake. Ain't nobody coming to disease I'm sorry with a squeeze bottle of Ronson all and a book of matches. James Franco ain't being sized for cement shoes. Both of them are still gonna have a job come next month. They don't get, they're, all they're not gonna have is the free passes they used to have for doing fucked up things anymore because their genitals are outies instead of innies. And if you are worried about all of this, about all of this, oh my God, the flash, or the, the, the pushback, or, or, the, or all these things, or, or that there's a witch hunt happening, or that men are somehow going to suffer. I think this line from Molly Fisher's article in a cut this week says it all. Quote, well, she said, women have been scared of men for a long time. Maybe men will be scared of women for a while now. And activists and journalists, I know y'all are feeling pretty good right now. It's a heady moment and the stories are flying fast and furious. But you got to take time to write this shit correct. The Babe article was, was a shit show, even if it was true. And I'm assuming it is. Azari confirmed it. And this squabbling between the side that says that the proper reckoning is now for this behavior and the side that says this was just a bad night out, maybe you could have that discussion without sounding like teenagers in fucking junior high cafeterias. We're having a serious moment in our national discourse, but calling one another out for their age and fashion choices during a time when we are literally watching centuries of power dynamics shift overnight is not how you want to be remembered. No one was standing around when Dr. King was taking people to the mountaintop, calling each other jackasses because they couldn't degree on map directions actually i take that back i'm sure there are a lot of them that was actually doing that but they weren't doing it on public on fucking twitter oh and maybe maybe you just want a little unsolicited sex advice from your friendly neighborhood low-rated podcaster oh god no 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 No. just say what's on your mind say it with kindness and humility at first you can get rough and dirty later but at the beginning ask don't demand once you both decided what you want to do you want to do this thing tell each other how you want to do and to be done too. It doesn't need to be a barter session or dickering over the price of a used car. It can be hot and sweaty, dirty talk, but talk about it. Let me be blunt. No one wants to unsolicit anything where they did not expect it or intend to receive it, no matter how well intentioned. And that goes for you too, ladies. That finger in the butt thing may sound funny and a sweet revenge, but it isn't. It just isn't. Now, if you tell me about it first, well, I'm still not going to be enthused. But at least we can discuss it. And I'm not so old that I can't remember how hard it was trying to figure out the sex thing in my teens and 20s and my 30s. It was a quagmire of self-esteem hormones and need that drove me to an endless loop of bad decisions. And I'm a dude. So I admit that I cannot fully understand the complications of living in a male-dominated society. So maybe my personal take on all this is just the bullshitting of a middle-aged man who's long ago stopped freaking the fuck out over fucking. I live by a very simple rule these days. If I fuck, I'm fucking someone that I care about who also wants to be fucked by me. And if I'm not fucking, that's fine too. Given the choice, I'm going to choose not having sex and having a real relationship with someone I love every single time because I can always jerk off. But until my artificial intelligence assistant reaches full sentience, I can never replace the people in my life. But the second my Google Home Mini can be my friend, then all bets are off. Support for this podcast comes from Microsoft Teams. The world has changed, and Microsoft Teams is there to help us stay connected. Teams is the safe and secure way to chat, meet, call, and collaborate. To learn more, visit Microsoft.com slash Teams. Support for this podcast comes from BMO. 
How will technology satisfy demands for a new level of order routing transparency? Why do you need to engage with a broker-dealer that can optimize the execution quality of every electronic trade? Unpredictable times call for expert insights. Read the article COVID-19 Underscores in Evolution in Electronic Trading by Anya O'Flynn, Managing Director and Head of Global Equity Products. Get her expert take at bmocm.com slash COVID. That's bmocm.com slash COVID. Electronic Trading. We work here. That is it for the show this week. Oh my, that was fun. Who knew that tackling the intricacies of the Me Too movement could be so much less damaging to my psyche than regular politics? It's probably because I don't get laid that I'm able to develop a nice degree of emotional separation from the issue. Speaking of my emotional deadness and being utterly bereft of physical pleasure, you can help others experience the yawning emptiness of eternal ennui that you experience by rating and reviewing the show wherever you found the podcast. It helps folks stare wide-eyed into the darkness inside me and have it reflected back in the endless emptiness of their own souls. You can further delve into the oblivion that is my internal entropy by following the show on Twitter, the Hell underscore podcast, or the show name on Facebook. All the shows are the show name on SoundCloud and at www.whatthehellpodcast.com. For me, Dave Bledsoe, producer, no seriously time is up when someone else needs to use the studio Gavin and all the other fictional automatons on the show. We want to say that love is just like bad medicine and there ain't no doctor that can cure the disease of you hearing this awful song over and over again now that I played it for you. We'll see you all next week.